A very warm welcome to this MTSS vlogcast series. I'm Lisa Collins, one of the founders of MTSS, and I'm delighted to be joined here with Deep Cambay, who is the founder of Regenerating Business. In this episode, we are going to be looking at ESG reporting regulations. So let's make a start deep. ESG reporting regulations have exploded over the last few years. Talk us through the reasons why this has happened. Yeah, um, huge. And there's a lot of confusion about it. And I still think there still is. And there will be, continue to be. Um, so COP26 was very much a watershed moment um, for ESG regulations. Um, so before COP26, we... As we mentioned in previous episodes, there's a lot of ESG frameworks and there were very much voluntary frameworks to report against. Very hard to benchmark because they're all nuanced in their own way. And when COP26 kind of came, it kind of really introduced and kind of um, strengthened the idea of mandatory regulations you know and that was coming it was you know there were bits coming bits implemented but this was significant and the reason for it is that um kind of the finance industry investors there was a kind of tipping point of where there was such a demand to understand from them you know what is you know what is a business's performance you know what's the risk attached to the business what's the kind of opportunities of the business you know what's the value of of of, of investing in them and it's not looking at the short term anymore it's about looking at the longer term resilience of a business and, and kind of getting that understanding and because all of these benchmarks are so different, nuance can benchmark one against the other, you know, they're completely like worlds apart. It's very complicated. So there's this demand to consolidate, have like more international standards to look at and to be able to make comparisons and benchmarking business versus business, industry versus industry. And so that's kind of where it came from. And COP26 launched the International Sustainability Standards Board. And I always hesitate when it comes to acronyms because I can, I, you know, I can hardly remember them myself, let alone like anybody else outside of the industry. So apologies for that. Um, and so it's still very new. Um, so, you know, there, there is there is a lot of regulation out there and I'll come on to the ISSB in a minute. But another part of that kind of consolidation world um, and kind of the regulatory world is the EU. So the EU are, are considered one of the most kind of robust, uh, kind of detailed ESG regulations in the marketplace, they they are really, I would consider at the forefront, looking at ESG in a broader way, in a deeper way. Um, and those laws have only come into place this year. This So in 2025, large institutes such as, who have um, over 50 million turnover, 25 million assets with over 500 employees are going to have to report against their financial year 2024 on this. And there is a lot going on in there, which we'll talk about again, you know, in, in other episodes, what that entails. But, you know, you can see there's a whole list, you know, across the globe of all of these regulations um, coming into play. Um, as you can see, and when, when you look at the kind of the dotted ones is where the regulations are actually coming into place now. So how do those regulations differ from country to country? That is a good question, but we're looking at it from, you know, it, it really depends on the laws and regulations of different countries. But what has happened with the ISSB is it's um, created a framework, like an international framework, which is still, you know, 
people are grappling with it. Um, different countries are adopting it into mandatory legislation. So the UK um, and other countries, when you look at the map, you start to see where you know they are putting the ISSB into ma mandatory legislation. And at the moment, there are two frameworks connected into this um, that would really make sense that's in the, in the marketplace. Very much prioritising on climate at the moment. We will see the S grow very, very soon uh, and the G to complement all of them. So the two frameworks are the TCFD, which is the Task Force Climate Financial Disclosures, um, and then you've got the SASB, the Sustainability Accounting standard board so those two are consolidated together into the ISSB now this marketplace is moving it's not finalized yet so they are they are still working on developing sector specific standards for the ISSB so you know what they've put in place is very much general climate focused standards and each country will then build their, their regulations, mandatory regulations on top of that framework. And they are all so working towards that interoperability. So how they work together and how they, they've got this synergy together. So, you know, as I say, it's confusing for anybody right now because it's moving at a pace and they're all at different stages. So all countries are at different stages, different levels of maturity. Uh, so it's quite a difficult one to get your head around, but, you know, we are getting there. And clearly the mandatory requirements are going to continue to increase. Yes. What are going to be the biggest challenges for businesses, do you think? So... The key challenge is data. Data is kind of key. I mean, lots of large businesses, they, you know, they deal with a handful of financial KPIs, which is very much established, standardized, understood on a global level of how um, a company looks at performance from a financial lens. The non-financial lens is, you know, up for grabs. You know, it's still very like everybody trying to work it out. So and, you know, there are many data points, you know, you're looking about a thousand plus data points, KPIs. You're looking at every aspect, the environmental, not just carbon, biodiversity, water, waste. Then you've got your, you know, your social, not just your employees, but your suppliers all the way through your value chain, transparency, all the way through to any raw materials, and you're crossing different industries. A technology, a camera company, for example, is connected to the mining industry when you're thinking about the raw materials of, of their actual product. Um, and then, you know, how are companies making those decisions? What's the infrastructure in place? So, you know, the, the key challenges are kind of data, how to report on that. A lot of companies will have to go through digital transformation projects, huge transformation projects, and I think that's in line with lots of other aspects of business as well. Um, and, uh, and education and, and engagement, um, kind of getting, getting a holistic understanding of what that actually means in a commercial sense. Yeah, and I know from an industry point of view, we're not great with our data right now. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the industry to be able to gather that data and we can benchmark ourselves and be able to see who's doing great. Are there any good industries benchmarking themselves on that data? On those not data yet. I would say you're not behind any other industries right now. Everybody is in the same boat and everybody is learning together. And in terms of reporting regulations what top tips would you leave on um, for this episode oh great question so I think climate keep as your priority look at those as you know what you want to disclose against I know carbon is very much talked about um, in within this industry so that's great to see but what is the industry talking about beyond carbon so water waste 
um, biodiversity and then connecting people um, and it's being holistic about things but not forgetting the governance aspect and, and people you know I think we very much it's very easy to silo things so when we think about governance and people you know we think of data privacy and cyber security in a very different kind of area but actually that's all an encompassing is fully integrated into the E, the S, the G and the financial economic and how they all interconnect together so it's thinking about it as a full business strategy rather than having your business strategy over here and your ESG and sustainability over there they're, they're one of the same so bring it all together yeah and I have to ask a question because we're seeing more ESG job titles. Is that the way a business should go? Employ somebody dedicated to this? I think you definitely need resource within your business dedicated to it. There's no standardised approach, no standardised titles right now. It's still very early if, if you think about the maturity levels. I mean, everybody knows what a CFO does uh, <laughs> but, or a CMO does, but not necessarily what sustainability is about you know there's not a lot of chief sustainability officers out in the marketplace but you're seeing it grow um, and they're very much the facilitator the connecting the dots bringing it together looking at from a strategic and how to translate it into operational action plans um, but yeah it's not standardized at all at the moment great thank you deep um, thank you for joining us in this episode and um, join us next time where we're going to take a look at the EUCSRD. Thank you.